You should also be aware of human trafficking. Yes, Canada also has a lot of cases of human trafficking. And it hello, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, then I am Tarusha and I make videos about life in Canada. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about things girls should know before coming to Canada. I'll also be talking about my experience with everything that I'm going to share. So I hope you'll find this video interesting and helpful. If you like this video, please press up the thumbs up button and leave a comment down below with any question you have. You can also reach out to me on my Instagram. My Instagram handle is just in the description below. So let's start the video. <laughs> now, honestly, this is not really only for a woman. It's, it's for everyone irrespective of the gender. But I'm going to share my personal experience as well. So I really hope this video is going to be helpful to anyone who's going to come to Canada. Now, I have divided this video into four different parts. And in the first part, I'm going to be talking about my journey from Nepal to Canada. So, it was not the first time that I had traveled alone or it was not my first international travel as well. But it was the first time that I was traveling for 14-15 hours and I had my transit in Qatar. So, my transit was really nice. My travel, in fact, overall travel was really nice. Uh, I did not face any difficulties. When I landed in Qatar, I directly went near the boarding gate for my next flight to Canada. And that was I was at least sure that I'm outside the place that I'm supposed to board the flight and I did not go and buy anything because I was not sure about the currency exchange and I also had a lot of food in the flight and I had some snacks with me for my transit so it was really helpful if you have longer transit then you can like go and exchange currency and buy food in the airport itself but if you have just like five six hours transit then you can buy some snacks so that you can have those snacks uh, while you are in your transit and flights do provide meals so I was not really hungry my only suggestion to you would be taking care of your own luggage obviously that's the most important thing and also not trusting anyone with your personal belongings because you've just met and you don't know anyone's intention after I landed in Canada it was again very swift very easy there were people guiding us in every step and it was not very difficult to navigate where to go so once you land in Canada you'll see a lot of people trying to help you so you won't have any difficulties even during transit if you ask anyone where your gate is they're going to help you and they are going to assist you so it's not difficult you just have to ask people for help but try to ask the uh, airport staff for help because they are the authorized people who can help you and that way you won't even get scammed now the second topic i'm going to talk about is women's safety and this is one of the most important topic i know a lot of parents who've sent their kids to canada also want to know about their kids their children's safety now talking about the women's safety the first and the foremost thing that women should do after they've come to Canada or anyone should do after they've come to Canada is familiarize themselves with the commuting plan they should know where the nearest bus stop is they should know which bus to take they should also know their surroundings better because it's better to be safe than to be sorry right and every second day we hear bad news about Toronto's TTC or other public transportations as well so it really depends on the place that you're coming to and the commute plan that the place has but if you know what time your bus comes or what time your public transportation comes and you leave your house planning according to the bus schedule then you're safe and if you're someone who walks a lot and if you're walking to your university or walking to your school or walking to your uh, workplace then it is uh, advised to take well um, lit routes right especially at night and during winters uh, it gets dark ar around 4 35 so it's really Really advisable to take the route where there is good street lights and also take the route in which you know people usually walk try to avoid the isolated areas especially during the night you should also be aware of human trafficking yes Canada also has a lot of cases of human trafficking and it has increased over the few years and being informed about the signs of human trafficking is really crucial when you go to Canada and you do not know a lot of people here in Canada you might be very vulnerable and you might trust other people easily and this is one one of the easy bait for human traffickers but it's really important to trust your instinct trust me guys your true feelings your instinct will never lie to you and don't be too easy to trust anyone that you've just met uh, unless you know someone very properly avoid going to their house and if it's absolutely important to go then make sure that you inform your trusted people your friends your family and keep them as your emergency contact I'm not trying to scare you guys. I know it sounds scary. I know people who are watching this might be scared. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to warn you and I just want you to be safe here. 
a lot of girls do night shifts and i'm not saying everything is scary but it's very important to be safe and very important to trust your own guts and just trust your own feelings okay. and now in case of danger right in case someone is trying to rob you or, or someone is going to harm you then in canada using paper spray is illegal so you cannot use paper spray in these situations so what can you do is you, you can buy this pull pin sirens and uh, my university actually provided us with this pull pin siren so i think a lot of different universities and colleges provide uh, everyone with the pull pin siren if your university or college does not provide this then you can also find this in amazon you can also find this in different other stores as well so it's advisable to buy this because once you pull the siren it starts making a very very loud noise and it can scare away the robber or anyone who's trying to harm you so, so even though uh, you're not allowed to buy pepper spray it's very 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 important to keep these sirens with you now the third topic is health and well-being and i'm going to be talking about women's health uh, in particular now we're away from our family and it's really 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 important to take care of ourselves i fell ill just a few weeks back and trust me guys it was the worst thing that could happen to anyone uh, when you are alone and you fall sick you cannot really do anything I was lucky that I had my friends around so they really helped me it's really important to take care of your health now when we come to Canada right there is change in environment there is change in lifestyle like I I never worked and went to college and cooked my meal all at one day by myself change in lifestyle and there is change in diet the meal that i used to have when i was back home is different from what i have right now i do not have time to cook dal rice vegetables and achar and everything right now so i either make myself a quick roll or, or peanut butter jam or whatever so there is a change in diet as well and because of the change in environment lifestyle and diet there can be a hormonal imbalance as well and hormonal imbalance can lead to irregular periods i've talked to my friends who've come to canada and we all have experienced a few ups and downs in our period state so if you are someone who's coming to canada then you just need to understand that you might experience all of these so it is really important to understand and manage stress manage a healthy diet and trust me guys i'm trying my best to eat healthy and manage my diet and as a student it might be difficult to maintain a healthy lifestyle and manage stress like recently i had project deadlines for all the subjects that i had i had quizzes i had assignments and i had to go to work so it was a little stressful situation and the only thing that helps when I'm stressed is good food so I took some time off for myself and I went to relax so whenever I'm stressed I try to relax and try to go to new restaurants in town that makes my stomach my brain everything really happy now that's all about health and well-being now let me talk about grooming so if anyone has been following my older videos um, I had a longer hair and I got my hair cut and I paid $30 plus tips which is really expensive from the amount I used to pay for haircut in Nepal. So yeah, haircut is expensive. Making your eyebrows and upper lips are expensive. I don't get my eyebrows and upper lips, but my friends who get it done tell me how expensive it can get. Especially when you have to get your eyebrows and upper lips done every month, it can get really expensive. For me, haircut, it's once a while. It's fine, I can do that. I can treat myself with a good haircut. But if you are someone who does the eyebrows and upper lips, then I would advise you to learn to do it yourself. I know doing upper lips yourself is uh, comparatively easier than doing eyebrows but I'm sure like you can learn and you can do it yourself because you'll be saving a lot of money uh, especially like even if it takes ten dollars right ten dollars a month would be one twenty dollars a year so you can you can save money here and there especially when you're a student after you start earning your money and you start doing your full-time job you can go to parlor every now and then but when you're a student you would want to save money so I would advise you to learn how to get your upper lips and your trading done and uh, talking about uh, hair i'm experiencing so much hair fall again that could be because of stress environmental change and stuff like that but if anyone has any suggestions to avoid hair fall please comment down below or reach out to me on my instagram suggest me with good oils and shampoos that i can buy so i don't experience a lot of hair loss and talking of all this beauty product let me talk about the women hygiene product tampons and pads tampons and pads again can get really expensive here in canada i did not get a lot of pads with me when i was coming to canada because i wanted to get all the clothes and food uh, when i came here but um, after coming here i did realize that uh, pads and tampons are really expensive here in canada so what you can do is you can buy these products uh, from costco in bulk and uh, these products also have a very good and longer best 
before date so uh, even if you store it in bulk you don't have to throw it away and you also need these products every month it's fine if you go and buy it in bulk uh, i don't have any costco near me and i don't have car to travel to costco so i just buy these products from shoppers drug mart which can again be very expensive i try to look out for offers but there are not many offers now the fourth part is jobs and finding a job in canada is same for everyone irrespective of their gender however there are a particular job that prefer female employees or uh, over male employees for example the nail technicians or the nail artists and uh, uh, for women like hairdressers or people who work in beauty salon and bakers i don't know why why people prefer female baker but i've not met as many male bakers as compared to female bakers so if anyone is coming to canada then they can get all this uh, certificates from their home country for nail artists they can learn how to do nail art and get a certificate they can learn how to get a haircut and get a certificate they can do parlor courses and get a certificate i would specially recommend this for students who are coming for a longer duration for example i came here in december of 2022 and my course is going to be over in april of 2024 so i just had like 16 months window as a student so it's not a long time to do all this part-time jobs for me but if anyone is coming for undergrad or diploma which which expands over like two to three years then it's advisable for them to get all this certificate because this certificate adds up and you can get job easily so that's all for today guys it's really important to be safe it's really important to take care of your health and it's really important to know your surroundings better i really hope that you like my video and my video is helpful for you my intention is not to scare you but to aware you it's better to be safe than to be sorry so if you like my video please press the thumbs up button it really encourages me and helps me make more videos and more content about life in canada i love sharing my experience and i hope my experience help you to navigate your life here in canada until next time Tara